it is. Wife and I took a road trip up to Fair, uh, Fairfield, Illinois, about 200 miles north of here. Uh, she drove up there and I drove back. Met a guy named Greg, sold me this mill. Couldn't ask for a better guy. Uh, it's basically in good shape. Uh, motor's a little weak on it. I think it may be wired wrong. Uh, there's one thing that's uh, not right on it. This It's got a tilting mechanism and it's froze up and the gear is broken for the uh, tilting adjustment. So that's the first thing. I've been First thing we're going to address, but uh, after that is taking, a, taking it apart and cleaning it up. Maybe put some uh, rust remover on the bed. Uh, I don't know if the paint's got lead in it. I'm going to get a test kit. Uh, I don't really want to strip it. I would rather sand it and then give it another coat. But if it's got lead in it, I don't want to do that. So I don't know how I'm going to do that just yet. But I'm really looking forward to it, just dying to get into it. First thing I'm going to do though is there's a uh, gear under here. Uh, I'm going to take that gear off. And I've looked at some blow apart diagrams of this and I'm going to try to tap on this and see if we can loosen up that head right there. So that's, that's what we're going to start with today. It's going to be a long process. Well, I got my shop all cleaned up. I got a feeling it's not going to stay that way very long. I've got the mill on those machine movers I made. Makes it pretty easy to roll around. Got a feeling I need to take that motor off there. It's kind of holding up the motor right there. Yep, it's pretty heavy. Heavy for a half horsepower. A little junky bearing puller here. It'll probably work. I need to get a good one. But right now, two fingers is what I need. Two finger bearing puller, so. There we go. I see a broken casting right there. Kind of worried me for a minute, but it's the gear. I mean, I'd rather the gear wasn't broken, but at least it's not the main part of the mill. These teeth right in here are stripped out on this gear. I was thinking about cutting a new keyway in it and putting that bad section up here. I may still do that, but it looks like this gear has got some cracks in it. Maybe I can TIG weld those. If the head is free, it shouldn't require a whole lot of torque to move it. Oh, it's going to be hard to get off of there. No way to get behind it and pull it. I got a bad feeling about that pin. I got a feeling it's part, part way sheared. Well, I didn't know if that was the, I was pounding, it's probably a tapered pin, but I didn't know whether I was driving it the wrong way or not. Kind of hard to tell. Looks like maybe I was. 
Probably ought to hit on it a couple more times and make sure it can't drive it out of there. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to drill it out. No, nope. I don't think that's going to move. That got it. Heck yeah, I like it. I have to come up with some longer screws. The screws are plenty long, but the threads are too short. I think I got some carriage bolts though. So. Well, we got the gear off the back here. And I put a piece of tape on the shaft with a very slight gap between the frame and the tape. I'll, sh I'll show you why. This head rotates right here. You loosen these bolts right here to, to rotate it. And I... Uh, the head is frozen. So I put a piece of metal in there, or shims or whatever, and use these lockdown bolts to push it out. Just backed it off. And I got a little gap in there and I've been spraying penetrating oil in there. I got all three, there's three lockdowns like that and I got all three like that. One underneath here. I'm wondering if I can rotate it. I kind of doubt it. But if I move that out further, I want to see if the shaft is also moving. That's why I put the tape on there. Okay, all three shims are out of there on all three. And they got a got a gap right there. And that should rotate, but I doubt it will. Not not by hand anyway. There's no real place to grab this thing. It's a safe place to hit right here with a rubber hammer or neoprene. There's a little measurement like degree angles right here. So where I can see it moving. I don't see it moving. That actually moved. Now 
that moved. Well, maybe I need to go ahead and push it out. I'm thinking maybe take this cover off and the down feed and all that. I probably have to take it apart anyway to clean it up. And that'll reduce the weight of that head tremendously. I believe that's supposed to be full of oil. Obviously it is not. I don't think that's been used much. Right there. Huh. It doesn't do much, does it? That's the pulley that drives the down feed. It sits. Oh, that's where the spine engages too. Hmm. Not sure how that comes out of there. I'm going to wipe up some of that penetrating oil before it gets down in the bearing, though. I'll probably clean all those bearings out. Hmm. Looks like it's pinned. Well, that means the uh, lead screw's got to come off and the table needs to slide off this way. It's pinned in place. I don't know. Uh, I guess it keeps everything aligned better.
Okay, I had my brother-in-law help me lift this table off. I just slid off the ends. Weighed about 50 pounds. It wasn't too bad. I've got the lead screw disconnected underneath here. I don't, I'm not sure, but I think I can lift this straight up. It's like a, a gib and a dovetail all in one. Okay. Pretty sure I can just lift this off. Yep. Now, I guess I need to remove that lead screw and figure out how to get this knee off of here. Then I'm going to take it to the sandblasters, I think. I'm going to cover up all the machine services and take it to the sandblaster. Seems to be the quickest and easiest way to do it and you end up with a really nice finish when you get done. This is why I have a set of very cheap wood chisels. Well, I'm not sure how to get this off. I would like to take it off. I'm thinking about cranking it up all the way so the threads come out of the bottom of the knee. Hooking a uh, hoist onto this right here. It's a good lifting point right here. And then on the other side, you remove these this gib right here in the lock and it'll just swing off of there. Yep, that's all the way up. I think that's the way to do it. I got a lifting point here and I'll just winch it up from the ceiling. Kind of scary dealing with all this weight and balancing points. But I think that's the way to do it. Hmm, wasn't too bad. Wonder how heavy that is. Oh, pretty heavy. 
I'm guessing about 150 pounds. Well, I got a lot of cleaning to do, a little bit at a time, uh, labeling. I don't want to get, <laughs> hopefully I haven't forgot where this all goes. Uh, working on the uh, Z-axis uh, leads crew. I'm soaking that in evaporust. Looks like it's getting better already. Uh, probably need to buy five gallon bucket of evaporust. Uh, it's not, not extremely rusty, but it's definitely got uh, film of rust on, on most of the parts. The bed of the mill, definitely I'll have to build some kind of trough to set that in. Anyway, that about wraps it up for this episode. Uh, hopefully I'll make some progress off camera. Uh, basically just cleaning. I'll show some of that, but cleaning gets pretty boring. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Uh, be sure and subscribe and ring that bell.